Hi, I'm William Horwood, best-selling author of Duncan Wood, and I'm here to tell you all about my new novel, Hidden World Spring. No. And then one day I woke up and decided the time was ready to come back. I don't think every author plans their whole career. I don't quite know how you would do that. In my case, it was about 10 or 15 years before I really, really... Or I should say it was about seven years before I really wanted to get back, and then another five or seven years before I really got the theme I wanted. So the answer is no, I didn't plan it. But yes, I'm now really thinking about it and getting there. So that's how it worked. Hidden World Spring is the first of four novels, a quartet, based on the seasons, or apparently based on the seasons, which in fact takes us from England right to the universe through two sets of characters, human beings on the one hand, who, uh, who are the ones who need wisdom, and the little people who are the hidden who have wisdom. And the two groups have to get together, they have to learn to work together, they have to learn to love each other, and they have to work, learn to progress. And they do this because they're on a quest to find four gems, each of which represents one of the seasons. Hit World Spring, clearly it's the gem of spring, and so on right through the seasons. When they find all four, then they hope that something else will happen. And it will happen. In terms of the actual characters in Hidden World, we, both, we have both humans and hidden. Hidden are little people about three foot high, and they are as rich in their culture as we are, if not richer. And they are the holders of the mysteries and the wisdom that we as human people, have for, as humans, have forgotten. So what they're about is the whole business of rediscovering for humans, i.e. our readers, though I hope there'll be some hidden reading the books as well, uh, that actually um, they convey for us or carry for us what we should know. And that's what hidden are. Everything, everything. I mean, I'm one of many people who had a totally and completely an awful, miserable childhood. In fact, it's staggeringly amazing that I'm sitting here talking to anyone and not sort of, you know, um, miserable in some lunatic asylum in a corner. That's because because I just had not a brilliant childhood. And I think a lot of writers, a lot of creatives go through the business of working their way through and they use, in my case, writing, I suppose, to explore some themes that are important. So my childhood is everything. I have to say as well, I was brought up about the sea. The sea is a natural environment, and so it taught me to love all natural environments. Uh, because if you're brought up by the sea, that's just how it is. You know, you see the weather, you see the wind, you, s you smell it in the air. And so it's completely natural to you. Whereas if you're brought up in an urban environment, I think the natural environment, or I should say a countryside, is less normal and less familiar. To me, it's completely familiar. Original inspiration came on one of the motorways when I was driving along and my then wife said to me, what about writing a book about little creatures that live on the, on the motorway? Or I should say on the interstices between the motorways. And that was the, the beginning. Uh, when I researched it, I found there were all kinds of uh, life and fauna and flora which lived uniquely, more or less, in this country anyway, on the motorways. So that was where the original idea came from. And then it was a matter of just exploring and seeing what was possible with that environment. Or those environments, I should say. A huge number, huge number. Uh, in terms of fantasy, obviously Tolkien, Ursula Le Guin is one as well. Uh, me most of the major fantasy writers you can think of, I've touched or read or been interested by. Uh, I suppose for non-fantasy writers, it has to be the the classic. Dickens, Trollope and all the rest of them and it would be foolish not to mention Shakespeare because Midsummer's Night Dream is a wonderfully fantastical play which I think any, any writer probably enjoys and understands. So those would be some of the writers. It's often forgotten that music is a major fact and I, I listen uh, to a lot of music I'm writing uh, art is very important, and you, if you take 19th century artists like John Martin, who are fantastical painters, or, or William Blake actually come to that, and poetry for him. So the whole lot of other media, music, art, sculpture as well, 
um, and someone like me goes to museums an awful lot and gets inspiration all over the place. So it's not just writers. Well, I used to think I knew what it was, and I've come to the conclusion I don't know, actually. I think, broadly speaking, it has to be highly disciplined, i.e. you have to do it. Uh, and I used to start very early in the morning. Uh, now I do, still, uh, but I'm more relaxed about it. So, broadly speaking, I try to write so many words a day during the period of writing, and then I try to revise so many words. And I reckon a book would take me a year or a bit more, depending. The longest ever was three and a half years. The shortest ever was 31 days. So, I've done both. Well, I keep getting asked that by readers who keep writing to me and say, please, work. Duncton Wood is the obvious one of the other Duncton books, and Scalagri is another one, actually. Um, the answer is, I very much hope so. It's one of those things that it needs the right publisher and the right timing and the right everything, but I think it'd be wonderful to see them back, yes.